Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. My name is Ronaldo Moore with PPG. And if you are new to the channel, a new viewer, welcome. Come on. Get on board. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. So you'll know when these videos are dropping. Today's topic or the topic for today's video. Top 10 residential building code violations. These are violations that I come across all the time. <laughs> so I decided to put together a top 10 list. They're all based on the 2018 RRC. So sit back, relax, and I'll see you again on the next one. All right, this is one that I that I see a lot of and the contractors always forget. They always forget to install the anti-tip bracket for the new electric or gas stoves. These are so if you know if you pull that door out like that and a little kid steps on that door, it'll keep keep this thing from, from tipping. And they always forget to install that that bracket, the anti-tip bracket. All right, we're back. Back with some more code violations. I am doing a exterior sheathing inspection, nail pattern. And when you're checking these, the exterior sheathing, this is the exterior sheathing there, it's, it's plywood. You have to make sure that the nails are actually going through the stud. <laughs> you can see that there. It's a lot of areas where the nails have totally missed the stud. <laughs> You're doing a nail pattern inspection on the exterior sheathing. The feel, the studs, the nail pattern goes every six inches on the edges and every 12 inches in the field. And let me kind of show you what I what I mean when I when I say that. <laughs> this is considered an, an edge. On the edge of that sheet of plywood. You need to nail every six inches. And in the field where this, the stud is, we need one every every foot. And the nails can't be overdriven. That's considered an overdriven nail. That's an overdriven nail. Overdriven. A lot of these nails are overdriven. All right, we're back. We're back with some more code violations. Let's talk faced and unfaced insulation. Code says all unfaced bats must be identified must have a marking showing the r value there's an exterior wall there with no markings on the bats at all so i don't even know what, what the r value is for, for that one unlike this wall here that shows what the what the r value is they all have to be marked all the bats have to be marked so you can walk up and tell what the R value is. R13. Now when it comes to face bats, they should never, ever, ever be left exposed. The paper is highly flammable and there's even a warning note on the paper itself stating that you should never leave these, if you can see that, Try to zoom in on that so you can read that. You should never leave the, the face bats exposed. So if you're in a house with the unfinished crawl space, unfinished basement, face bats should never be left exposed. Another quick one that I catch a lot or I find a lot. I fail a lot of framing inspections because of this. Um, when dealing with four ply LVLs, they cannot be nailed together. They have to be bolted together, half an inch bolt, nut and washer, 
are a long screw and they have to be staggered. These are nailed together. So, um, and this is a four ply LVL setup here. Um, they have to either bolt it or screwed and they have to be staggered. And the weight has to be transferred down to the slab. So we got four ply LVL, we got four studs and that weight is being transferred down to the slab. I, I see this one a lot more than I should. Um, the sterilizers. Max height on the sterilizer is seven and three quarter. That's it. That top one is clearly higher than, than seven and three quarter. And you can't be over three eighths of an inch difference between heights of risers, for, between the riser height for that whole stairway. So max height, seven three quarter, can't have more than three eighths difference for that whole stair, stairway there for each riser. All right, we're back with more violations. This is one that I'm starting to see a lot of. The, the egress windows of a bedroom. This is a brand new home. Uh, that's a bedroom here. It's another bedroom here with, with two windows. And the issue is the, the egress, egress windows must be five square feet on the first level and I think 5.7 on the second and maybe a third level if you have one. And I did the measurements, it's like two and a half feet going horizontal and like one and a half for that opening for a vertical. And that definitely doesn't meet the five square feet needed for somebody to get out in case there was a fire. That should have probably should have been caught on the, on the rough. I didn't do the rough, but <laughs> it should have been caught. But egress windows, first floor must be five square feet. I think 5.7. Uh, second level and the third level. All right, I'm back, back doing a framing inspection. What you're looking at is a a concealed chase. They're gonna draw drywall around that chase. That's the bottom. That's the floor, and it goes up to the top. You have to seal the top of all concealed chases. We got another one over behind this bathtub. Hope you guys can see that. It's, it's kind of dark in here. Um, but that's, that's a bathtub there. Shower valve. And it's, there's a concealed chase behind that tub. That's the top. You gotta seal that. Any concealed chase, that's the chase behind that tub. I'll try to pan out so you can see it, but we got to seal the top of that. All concealed chases. I ran across this one while I was doing a framing inspection and uh, it's a broken engineered trust. You see that. When you have that type of situation, you need an engineer's letter. You need the correct fix and an engineer's letter stating, well, a drawing, an engineer's drawing. Typically they supply a little eight and a half by 11 drawing showing uh, the correct way to fix that and an engineer's letter. But that's a, these are engineered trust, engineered roof trust. And that's a broken one right there. So always remember, look while you're doing a framing inspection to take a look up if you have engineered trust. Take a look up and look up at the cords. 
check for, for broken trust. Back with some more code violations. I am doing a final on a renovated home and I'm checking the, to see if they need a guard rail at this front porch. And if it's higher than, than 30 inches. And it is, they need a guard rail at this front porch. So any deck it's higher than 30 inches off the ground. A guardrail is required. Back with some more framing code violations. Uh, this, is, this is one I see a whole lot. Uh, let's talk seal plate or bottom plate and anchor bolts, where anchor bolts or straps are required. Anchor bolts are required 12 inches within 12 inches of the end of a seal plate or bottom plate. Like this particular situation here, we, we, we have strap, the strap there, but within 12 inches of the end of that seal plate or bottom plate, we need, we need a bolt um, in, in every six feet thereafter. Um, he didn't do it there. Uh, this is a door. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but we don't have that's the beginning of the, the bottom plate. We need one right in that area, definitely one within 12 inches of the start of that one. And this is it's like that throughout this, this framing uh, inspection here that I'm doing. Um, definitely right there, we, we have a strap on, on one side, but the beginning of a seal plate, we need within 12 inches, we need anchor bolt. Some more code violations. I am doing a building final on a condo, brand new. I was in the process of checking the stairs here for the, for the height of the risers. When I came across this little area here on this stairway, which looked a little suspect. The minimum headroom area above a stairway is six foot eight inches. That looked a little suspect, so I decided to pull out my tape measure and kind of measure it. So, took my tape measure here and it's down on that tread. I can get it, get it right. There we go here. And I'm looking at about six foot, four inches. So minimum headroom above a stairway, six foot, eight inches. They got short about four inches. So they need to come back and bump that up to meet the six foot eight inch headroom area.